right, we're checking out the only game where you can test the extreme durability of the human body. It's Beam and G. We wanted to put dummies up against the most extreme durability tests, and so it's time for some pain. We're gonna be testing things like how many dummies does it take to stop a car? At what height does a dummy need to fall before its head impales its own pelvis? How many nukes does it take to completely evaporate a dummy from the planet, among other things? This is a dummy. This is a car. They're gonna become really good friends, so let's do this. Bathtubs have protected people from everything from grenades to earthquakes. Will it protect you from a crash? The answer is absolutely not. They might ask, well, great, what happens to the human body inside of a bathtub when it's launched off the front of a car? See right here, do you see this dummy? Do you think he's waving? See his hands up in the air? He's like, thanks for the opportunity, Gray. No, not at all. What's happening is he's trying to grasp his own soul as it leaves his body. I even provided some oil eggs to this crash. I was hoping that lubing up the dummy could save him from this death. That's not what happens. So right about, I would say here is where the dummy realizes that he has made a poor choice. Now a canister of gas strikes him in the back of the head, immediately crushing his skull. And then somehow the entire groin folds in a way that is not even slightly humanly possible. The other guy is eating the glass. A tire has yeeted itself from the scene. This is what it looks like from a, a person's perspective as the driver. This is what it looks like sitting inside of the bathtub of bad choices. <laughs> and right here is where you get to see where a bathtub has melded into a person's calf. How about if we throw a seesaw ramp into the mix? Will the bathtub save the dummy from death? You can see right here, two dummies driving to the testing area. This is why dad never came home after he went to go get the milk. No. <laughs> The dummy flies out of the bathtub immediately. Now he does land back into the bathtub after ramping this thing, but not before we see him getting every single vertebrae destroyed from impacting a concrete wall. And it's like, how's the driver doing? Well, once he finally comes to rest, his head has penetrated the entire steering wheel. So is a bathtub the last line of defense in all these different movies? No. How many dummies does it take to stop a car? Here is a dummy. He is prepared to die for this test. Here is a car <laughs> aptly named Pain. Now you'll notice the car here is not overpowered or particularly fast in any way. We wanted a nice baseline. One dummy cannot stop a car at all. It barely slowed it down. In fact, the only thing that's happening is this dummy is getting a free Uber ride. You'll notice though that he has gripped onto the hood incredibly well. He's basically a human ornament. I'm pretty sure all the damage is to, is to the windshield, and that's from the head snapping against it. I needed to really slow things down so that we could understand what part of the dummy strikes first. It's the knees. It's 100% the knees. There will not be any adventurers left when we're done with this testing because I have a feeling it's always gonna be the knees. Can 10 dummies stop a car? Now, much like a stack of flapjacks, you have to try and squeeze these dummies as close as possible together so that they act as one gigantic speed bump. Needless to say though, 10 dummies can also not stop a car at all. Some of them will get stuck under the wheel well, which will slow it down like this, but all that I have created is a human snowplow. <laughs> no joke, if we look closer at this, I'm almost certain that someone's legs gets tangled inside of the belts of the vehicle. Whose legs is it? Is it the first guy? I'm pretty sure it's the first guy. If you're one of the first two people, you have the worst spot in, in this entirety of testing because the rest of the dummies just fly from the shock of the first few dummies, but the first two dummies get to get stuck inside of the engine block. So how many dummies does it take to stop a vehicle? 50. It is 50 dummies in order to have any chance to do it. And you'll see why in a second. Now, some of the dummies are having, oh, some of my dummies just had heart attacks. Hold on. Okay, I think at this point I have higher dummies with a lot better cardiovascular strength, and they are all perfectly in line. Pain versus 50 of the bravest dummies this side of the Rockies. You'll notice all of them standing tall, only to get crushed by the car, and the car gets completely stopped. The dummies have lodged themselves underneath the chassis and are now stuck inside of the wheels, so the wheels can no longer turn at all. Now this position, will give you an excellent view of how far the raw power of the car takes it, which is right about to the 15th dummy before it is shucked off to the side and the, the snowbank of dummies to follow leave it unable to climb. Now, if you wanted to see something absolutely nightmarish, you can watch it from this view. 
So you can see the dummy centipede of horror growing and sliding <laughs> with the underside of the car. I love how there's no natural movement here at all. It's just like a janky glitched up mess. And then how about something with more speed and more power, something a bit more modern? It doesn't matter. 50 dummies will stop just about anything or completely break the game. <laughs> You'll notice right here that the only thing speed does is dissect the dummies a little bit more. There's a foot, there is a head, that is an entire arm. It looks like it's giving us the thumbs up. That means that the dummy is fine. There is a dummy on the bottom there, dabbing on the haters. 50 dummies is the correct number. This test had very unpredictable results. That was one dummy. How many dummies does it take to stop two cars from getting into a head-on collision? Now you'll notice that one dummy has no, uh, no effect at all. As a matter of fact, you may have seen a piece of the car kick a field goal. Did you catch it? I have to slow down a lot so that you can see because it shoots off of the car at light speed after these two hit together. There it is. <laughs> it's the side view mirror. So what about 10 dummies? 10 dummies are able to change the trajectories of the car enough to stop a head-on collision. Now you get a perfect opportunity to witness this right about here as the car is shucked in such a way. Now, unfortunately there is kind of like a comet of dummies that has been formed by this crash, but the amount of dummies managed to increase the height of the one car enough to the point where it could not get into a full head-on collision anymore. How high does a dummy need to fall before it bounces at least six feet off the ground? Now you'll see starting off, we have a dummy at three foot, six foot, and nine foot. All of the falls from this height are not that bad. Well, I say not that bad. Obviously, people's heads are striking the asphalt pretty hard. Now, you'll notice right here, both of the knees buckle inward and probably break. Right over here, it's more or less the hips giving up and then the head snapping backward and the neck getting pulverized. And that's only at six feet. And then at nine foot, that little extra distance in order to get closer to terminal velocity does so much. <laughs> the dummy begins to bounce from the impact, but it's still not a total crumpling of the body, even though for some reason the legs are on opposite sides of the hips. We had to go to 200 feet in order to get an appropriate six foot bounce from a dummy. For people that really love math, that means that the speed that we're hitting the ground is roughly 62.6 .6 meters a second, or I guess 225 kilometers per hour. How did I learn this? Something called the splat calculator. <laughs> How does gravity affect dummies involved in jumping cars? Right here, we're going to be jumping with earth gravity. So GTA makes it look pretty easy to just stick a landing and survive. You'll notice right about here, this is where things begin to go sour for the dummy because it's doing like 13 flips and then in the end, its forearm has penetrated its own skull due to Earth's gravity. Now, where do things go wrong? See, right about, I would say here, the dummy begins to raise its hand in the air as if to protect its skull from what is coming. It sees that the car is fully flipping. It is going to land directly on the roof. That doesn't work at all because the hand is turned into a gelatinous mass. At this point, he has no control over what his arm does because the bones are now basically yogurt. And after this roll right here, the arm begins to try to murder <laughs> the individual that possesses it until like a spear from Asgard, it has penetrated the back of the occipital bone. <laughs> So what happens if we move over to moon gravity? I had no idea how much this would cause the test itself to become absolute agony. The problem here is that the vehicle doesn't have enough weight from the gravity pushing down on it to catch the asphalt. So it can't gain any speed and I can barely drive the thing because there's no friction. So taking apart the fact that I'm going to hit this ramp at about 25 miles an hour, can it jump this distance? Yes, it can because of the gigantic amount of space that you're able to cover. Plus when you impact anything at this low gravity, look at how lightly it takes the impact. The dummy here would probably survive this jump from moon gravity. Moon gravity also allows you to get the epic undercarriage shot as it flies through the air. 
It's amazing how bad that crash looks, even though it doesn't do a lot of damage. Even when the car itself lands, the only thing that really happens is the person goes from the driver's seat into the passenger seat, and then, I don't know, the collision just stops working because they slowly snake their way into the frame. How about if we move over to Mars gravity? Mars has probably the most dangerous gravity of all the different options. You wouldn't think it. But what happens is it gives you just enough speed in order to get going faster than like 15 miles an hour. But by the time you take the jump, the gravity acts fast enough that you can't complete the distance. And it also makes it hurt bad enough that when you hit the ground, the impact is significant to the point where the car will catch on fire and the dummy will be burning alive. That right there is a decent amount of damage. Now, as we slowly cascade into the ravine, we'll get the opportunity to reach a speed that is enough to where it finally impacts the bottom of the ravine, catches on fire, and the test subject is burning like a hot pocket inside of a microwave that's been left on by a high school student. Okay, so let's go high. We did the moon, we did Mars, how about Jupiter? Mainly the question I had is could the car even drive in Jupiter's gravity? The car drives great. It is like a low rider. The car is slammed and then it gets off the ramp and it goes absolutely nowhere and plummets into the ground like an arrow. That right there is probably the most awesome amount of damage that I've seen because the person and the vehicle are now one. You'll notice shortly after the fail of the jump from Jupiter's gravity, right about, I would say, not yet, not yet, here is where our dummy begins to become a dollar store version of Optimus Prime. See, you can see that the car has 100% transformed. It's only half as large as it was before. Not really sure what part of the vehicle the dummy just ate just then. That, that may have been a gearbox or something. I'm not really sure. And we have melded and completely fused into the glass. Are you able to make the jump at Saturn's gravity? Saturn is kind of right in the middle of everything. Not as bad as Jupiter and it's not as light as anything like Mars or the moon? The answer is not quite. Uh, you may get just not enough to die horribly to the point where your head impacts the glass immediately, a tire flies off, and then you fall down into the ravine again of sadness. At the bottom of the Sarlacc pit, like always, you catch on fire. I have no idea why this is the most flammable area on Earth, but it is. The coolest amount of gravity, though, goes to Uranus. I know it sounds like we did that on purpose, like it had to be Uranus that had the most interesting amount of gravity. This gravity is perfect because for some reason, it loves to rip the car in half. No, seriously, it rips the car in half, the front to the back, and then there's enough gravity to keep you flying after the car gets ripped, so you make the jump but you're also bifurcated by your own door. So the dummy gets cut in half and the car gets cut in half. That's awesome. It's kind of everything in this gravity range. Venus is exactly the same. Venus gravity. Will it rip you in half, you ask? The answer is pain. And also, absolutely it will. <laughs> I don't even know what's on fire on this car right now because half of it's gone. And <laughs> the entire back seat and the trunk isn't there anymore, and yet somehow a fire has broken out in that area. The safest gravity is Mercury. If you wanna survive and do epic jumps, you need to go to Mercury, because the amount of gravity is perfect to get speed, perfect to catch huge air, and when you finally land, it is the softest, smoothest landing you can get. The dummy suffers no damage, and sticks the landing. I mean, other than possibly a couple of compacted vertebrae. Just for kicks, we tried Pluto. The problem is, is that there's not enough gravity to do anything. The car just kind of bounces off of any little bump in the road, and then it never gets its bearings again. And it just kind of floats around like a sad Frisbee. You can't even die from hitting the ground because you're only hitting the ground at like three inches a second. <laughs> like, look at the fall here. The guy has every opportunity in the world to probably take a nap or make himself a sandwich before eventually the car impacts with the grass. And zero G is pretty much what you would expect zero G to be. Is a small hydraulic press more dangerous than a large hydraulic press? I mean, technically they're all pressing the same amount, right? 
So where's the danger come from? This test revealed something very interesting. The danger comes from the smaller surface area. When you have a much smaller hydraulic press, from this distance, it really doesn't do anything. It just kind of, uh, you know, slowly turns your neck in on itself and then makes you flop to the ground. When you're on the ground and have nowhere to go, it completely dissects the dummy. The head, the arms, the torso all broke off immediately. The larger hydraulic press, Again, from up top, not really too much. You lower it down so there's less places to go, it's okay. It ripped the dummy in half and then the dummy glitched out of existence, that was pretty cool. When the dummy doesn't glitch out of existence, with enough beatings, you can get it to rip in half. And then the largest hydraulic press, as you would expect from this testing, showed the lowest amount of immediate death. Look at this, dummy is still in one piece. That is incredible. I mean, you can just pummel this thing with the large hydraulic press and you will not get a limb to come off. Small hydraulic press, amazing. Right there. Do you see that? That is just the legs. <laughs> it's just the two legs trying to run away from the challenge. It's like, I don't wanna be here anymore. Not after all this time. Random hand playing the piano in midair. Large hydraulic press does turn a person into a piece of human tin foil but nothing gets ripped off. What happens if you drop different things on a dummy? Like a hay bale. Not gonna lie, the hay bale did a lot more than I expected it would do. It doesn't seem that bad, but I don't know if a person can survive that. If you notice, there was nothing left of their neck when the hay bale hit them on the top of the head. I mean, it's only gonna get worse. Here's a slab of concrete falling onto the dummy. It did take significantly more damage and it did open up the chest cavity like it was performing open heart surgery. So that is an interesting piece of information. The anvil was a little bit less impressive, maybe because it's just smaller in size. That's a thousand pounds. This is a fantastic view of what it did do though. That much weight over such a small area. <laughs> It'll reduce your height from a six foot person into like four foot nine immediately. Still though, the dummy's in one piece. How about a gigantic boulder? It's at this point that we get to see real damage. The dummy not only takes the damage hard from the boulder, but it just starts to randomly get possessed by the devil. I don't know why. You can see there is no motion from this creature until it gets turned into human mashed potatoes. Now it can suddenly break dance. It's like an aftermarket member of the Three Stooges once it gets compacted into a human flapjack right here. You can see as the skull is removed from the entirety of the body and the torso is reduced to about one third of its total size. For fun, as you can imagine, we had to eventually put a dummy up against a nuke in order to find out not just how to take parts of the dummy off like we have been testing up to this point, but what it would take to just remove the dummy from existence inside of the game. Now, the nuke itself does incredible damage from the impact. That was a direct hit onto the skull. The explosion afterward and the odd mist of Mountain Dew that rains over the dummy still kept it mostly in one piece. Now, yes, it is high-fiving its own brain with its hand, but you can see the dummy still in one piece. How about 360 nukes? It is a literal carpet of nukes. I don't know if you'd want to rest on this after a hard day's work. Well, it's not like it would matter. It would probably de-atomize your entire body. But this, as we follow the insanity to the ground, causes this. Sparks are flying. The game itself is trying valiantly to crash, and there is a smoke cloud that covers the entire testing area. If you try and slow down to see what happened, this glitched out insanity is what you get, so good luck. Much like the Event Horizon, Beam and G at this point opens up a gateway to Satan's backyard, and the dummy literally evaporates. It is gone. It's no longer a part of the game. 360 nukes will remove you from existence. Well, I'm glad I figured out what it would take to leave the planet. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode of BeamNG. The next time, stay foxy, much love.